Here. No one caught. 
that, no one told me either. Okay. Um, these series of dots would be for the E. The series of lines would be for um, the A sense. If you see multiple lines, it's usually an A vowel. If you see multiple dots at this level, all you need to know is multiple dots give you the E vowel. Um, if you have just one dot or a dot with a U following without a vowel underneath it, then it is a, a um, I, should, I should probably have done it the other way around, other way around, put the long one here. The dot followed by the U or just the dot by itself is, is the, the I vowel pronounced E, and then we have usually a vowel that's used for both the O and the U sound, or the O and the U. The dot on top, like a bird in the air, we say, oh, look at that bird in the air, and there's there's a little bird floating in the air, and it gives us the O sound. But when a woman wears a purse on the side, we learn to say, ooh, look at that nice purse on, it, on her side. Okay? So whether it's the bird in the air or the purse on the side, we have the O or the O sound. Other ways to make an O would just be forget or just remove the vav, and there would be an O floating in the air at the same level. Or we have underneath a letter, we have three dots uh, in a line at a perpendicular, a 45 degree angle. Okay? So, these are our major vowels here. And every once in a while, there also is the patak or the kamas that you would see for a sound, it can be an O. The few, very few times that it's an O sound, you just memorize it. It's just learned that way. As in coal. Coal looks like it should be cow, but it's really coal. But, you know, we, we won't go into all of that depth. Just know, majority of the time, you're learning or memorizing it this way. When you see the multiple lines, it's a. Ah. You see the multiple dots, it's e. Eh. You see one dot, it's, you can think one dot like a dot of an I. It's an I vowel, and it's E. And then the dot up in the air is the, the O sound, and the dot on the side, or underneath, here, in this form, is the U sound. Okay? So those are our vowels. Let's take a look at our, our vocabulary list just for Hebrew blessings, so that we can maybe say a few blessings today. Okay, so let's take a look at the first word we have. We have the word here, Beit, Vav, uh, Reish, and then Chaf Sofit. Okay? So I gotta finish that bait there. Okay, so we have here the word. Oh, I you know what? It's trans it's transposed here. And it, it needs the same thing on the bottom. I, I you need to probably fix that. That, that I don't know, that was just a typo of mine. Um, so the valve and the race need to be moved around. Okay? So basically we have <laughs> The letter bait, which would be, give me the, the transliteration of the Hebrew of these letters. What's the letter bait? It's a B. Okay. What's the multiple lines there? The kamas? We have an A. And then we have the letter resh. What is that? An R. And notice it's always a consonant with its vowel. A consonant with its vowel. Normally we look for a consonant. Vowel to be right underneath. If it's not underneath, like this one, the race, there's no vowel underneath. Where do we look next? Next to it. Next to it to the left, okay? So we either look down, or if there's nothing down, under uh, to the left, okay? So we have the race, and what's the vowel that we're using here? The U. The U, so we make that U. And then we know the cough without a, uh, with the cough, with the dot, the dagesh in the center is a K sound. Without the dot, it is a KH or CH sound. And if it's at the last letter of a word, it changes form altogether and looks like a dalet with a long line past the imaginary writing lines, the dot lines. Okay? Like if you're writing like a little kid, you write in, in the lines, right? Mm -hmm. Well, imagine that the, in, there are five letters that change the look of uh, uh, their look. Um, if they're at the end of the word, cough is one of them. So here we pronounce this as cough. This is cough. Or I like to spell it like this. Cough. And then this is cough. 
Sofit means end. So Chaf Sofit is at the end. Now, because normally this would be the dotted line for the writing, we do not put the vowel underneath, we put it above the line right there. Kind of like where the Dalit would normally end. Again, this looks like a Dalit, the fourth letter in Hebrew. But it's not a Dalit. Because the line that extends along is Chasofit. Okay. And in Hebrew you'll find some letters look alike. A lot of them look alike. Hey, Chet, um, Tav, they all look alike. Zion and Bob sometimes look alike. A um, few others. Uh, um, sometimes Bait and... Ha look alike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you don't realize there's a strong line there, you might think that it's a um, the, the 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 K the C the K H over the B uh, spelling of that. Okay, so in this case, what are we going to put here? We're going to put C H. Every once in a while, you'll see it spelled K H. Again, it's the same Baruch. thing. Baruch. Okay, this is actually a name also. Baruch. Yeah. Is a name. It's in the it's in the in the Bible, and it means blessed one, someone who's blessed. Okay, so it's also a verb here, Baruch, and the similar similar concept is the word Berach, which means knee. So when you Baruch, you bend the knee to God. That's the custom based upon the root meaning of the word. <laughs> That's actually what the word blessed means. It means to bend your knee. So, you get blessed when you bend your knee, and you bless him when you bend your knee. So it goes both ways. <laughs> Surrendering your will to his, and not him to you. Amen? Amen? Okay. So, now, let's take a look at our next word. We have the masculine singular pronoun, and that is a top. Okay, so we have Ata, and what does Ata mean? You. 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 Need new pins. Ata, we have here, blessed, and then we have here, you. Okay, um, well, let's go to the next obvious word, and let's go to what the Sudur uses for Yud, yud is actually a prayer book that says yud, yud for the full name of God, which we'd normally say Y-H-V-H in translations, um, or we would respectfully say a shame in conversation, Adonai in blessings. So we could say all of this is referring to what we normally pronounce as Adonai, or in conversation, Hashem, as in Baruch Hashem. Okay, so the prayer books want to avoid you even thinking to pronounce the name without knowing the proper pronunciation, so they'll just put Yud Yud as a sign or symbol that we're talking about the name of God, which would actually be Yud Hey Vav Hey. Okay, all right. So here we have. The first beginning of all blessing, Baruch Atah Adonai, and it's found throughout the scripture. Um, someone just get me, if you could, Second Chronicles um, twenty nine ten. Second Chronicles twenty nine ten. Now it is in my heart to cut a covenant with yud heh vav the Elohim of Israel, and the glow of his anger shall turn back from us. Thank you. Maybe I want, um, maybe it's First Chronicles. First Chronicles? <laughs> yeah, I know it's 29, though. Okay, so we are... We just read Second Chronicles. That's actually, yeah, it was 
actually, yes, it's First Chronicles. My, uh, my, that was a great verse too, though. <laughs> Let's do uh, First Chronicles 29 and start with verse 10. And David blessed Minhabah before the eyes of all the congregation. And David said, Blessed are you, O Yudhebabe, the Elohim of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Okay, so let, let, what do we have here? We have the basic way to pray or say blessings in, in Judaism, and it's found right here in the Torah. Um, of course, he makes it a little bit personal because he actually refers to who actually corporately says, Our Father, which we say in the Lord's Prayer, the Disciples' Prayer, Avinu Shabbat Shemayim, Our Father, which is in the heavens. And here we have the concept with Adonai, um, we have Avinu. And many times we pray, Avinu Malkinu, Our Father, Our King. So if we take a look at... Um, see if we can actually go to the... We can silence all cell phones, please. Okay, so if I take a look at the, the Hebrew on this verse. Hmm, by correct, David et Adonai le'ene kol hakahal. Hmm. And David blessed the Lord before all of the congregation, the kahal, we say kehilat, congregation of, uh, all of the congregation, vayomer, David, baruch, ata, adonai, elohe Israel, avinu, meolam, vahed. That's exactly what he said in Hebrew. So we have the basis of David himself praying this royal prayer, calling God, not only um, does he use yud he vav he, but he says, the God of Israel, Elohe Israel, which is Elohim um, in construct state. Elohe. Similar to our God, Eloheinu, our God. So Elohe means God of. Eloheinu means our God. And the new, the ending the in you is from Anachnu. The new is from that we are, or concept of our. So what he says is that blessed are you, O Lord. God of Israel, but then he personalizes it and says Avinu. And not only says that he's Abba, he's Daddy, he's Av. He didn't say Avi, which is my father. He says Avinu. That means he's our father. Meolam Vaed. From eternity, forever and ever. Or literally translated forever and ever. Okay? From eternity to eternity, kind of the concept. Okay, so that's a perfect example of how not only Yeshua prayed, calling um, his father Avinu and saying he's our father, all inclusive, but it also gives us the, the construct of all blessings. We say Baruch Atah Adonai. Now, instead of saying Elohim Israel, the God of Israel, we usually just say personalize it, our God. So instead of Elohim, we say Eloheinu. So if we take a look at the next word. We have, first of all, the word for God uh, is El Elohim. Okay, so we have Eloheinu. Okay. And this would be our God. So we have... Oh, I need big pens. Here's the one. Elohenu. You can also spell it with an I, Elohenu, whichever way you want is correct. The, the Yud would um, give us either a Y or you could use, spell it as an I, either way, because we know the Yud is used in connection uh, with the sounding of that. And it's all the same in the pronunciation in English. Elohenu, or you can spell it H E I for Elohenu. Okay? Question? Um, underneath the, uh, the Shema, you know, I have to check that because actually, in my brain, I'm remembering this, but on paper, I have the other. We'll put that for now. I have to 
check that, make sure it's the, the right vowel. Either way, it is the um, E vowel there for Elohenu, and that would mean our God. Okay? Okay? So let's say these uh, four words so far in the blessing. Do it again. So typically, the vowing is to bend the knee, to bow, and then to come up on Baruch Atah Adonai. That's usually the way it's done. And then we have Elohim. Uh, so you bow before him, but since he's the glory lifter of your head, you lift your head back up. All of these are symbolic, metaphoric of how to present yourself before God. And because there wasn't all what I could probably call the pomp and circumstance of the temple anymore, since the destruction of it in 70 AD, the rabbis wanted to keep a way to realize that there's a lot of ceremony the priests had to do coming into the presence of God. They would actually have to do certain things that scripture would tell them, and so they wanted to transfer that to the house of Israel, generically making all men um, priests unto the Lord, or priests of their home, and they would carry on some of the tradition, which is where the idea of wearing a kippah comes from, because it was commanded the priests had to cover the anointing on their head. Once they were anointed with oil, they always had to have the head covering on their head, sometimes translated a bonnet or a turban. So this is very common among kings, priests, and even prophets to have a head covering. In fact, it's, it's common throughout all of the Middle East, and, uh, Israel and even Arab countries, to cover your head. It's just one of those ancient things. If you see the tradition of it translated even to Christian forms, or first of all Catholic, you'll see that the Pope actually wears a yarmulke. Mm -hmm. And so do the cardinals wear a yarmulke. Um, so it's interesting. Um, he has one that's all white, and the others have one that's red. But you, you can see where the tradition came from. What do you think the Catholic Church got that? Torah. They got it from the Torah because the priests were commanded to have a head covering. And so what do they call their ministers? Priests. Now they're not from the tribe of Levi, so technically they're disqualified. But the idea that they wear them is referring to their leadership in the Catholic Church. It's showing that they're priests um, and, and a certain level of priesthood. So it's a tradition. And I mean, every once in a while I just uh, uh, type that in, the Pope wears a yarmulke or a kippah. And you, it's funny how many people are like getting that and they're blogging like, hey, did you ever notice? That, you know, no one ever questioned it before, but it's all of a sudden it's like kind of connected because it looks just like the yarmulkes that you, you have offered in synagogues for those guests who don't have one. They want to put one on. It looks exactly like that. I mean, it's almost identical. So, uh, nonetheless, we have this beginning construction, and then we need um, another word, a couple, uh, two more words here to be able to get to all basic blessings, okay? So, the next word we're going to look at is mem. Uh, Alamed, and Chasofi, um, okay? Okay, so spell this out for me. Okay, we have an M, E, L, E, C, H. Again, you can spell the K, H if you'd like. Either way is fine. No. But I want you to understand that there was also, um, among the Semitic languages, the same word for king was used among pagans that he had a god, Molech. Molech. All it meant was he was the king. The Canaanites also had a god, El, which is generically means God. Well, what they were saying was that deity for them was God, the supreme God. So it, it's not that we're using pagan words is that the pagans had the same base root language with the same cognate letters, just like Allah is the same root letters in Arabic for Elohim that comes from Allah, to swear and make covenant. Doesn't mean that we worship Allah. It means that the Arabic is a sister language to Hebrew and they only have one word for God. Now they call their supreme God Allah, right? But that's only a word for God in Arabic. It is not specific in, 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 in Arabic until you have Muhammad coming in and making one God, probably a moon God, into God, Allah. Right? But it's the same root as Elohim, because we know the Allah can be used to make an ascent. 
So in Aleph, Lamed, and He, these are the letters Allah. Did you catch that? Hey, nothing against uh, our Arabic believers that actually call God Allah because that's the only word they have for God in their, their language. It's always been a conflict, conflict among Messianic Jews and others who question, are they still worshiping Allah? No, it's just a generic word for God, and it can be used specifically for their supreme God. Okay? I got the Elohim, it's a Sarah and not a Sukkot, I It's a Sarah, it was a Sarah. See, my brain remembered right, but I put the, I probably typed this one fast when I typed it a few years back, and just never made the correction, so I'll make the correction before we put the online copy on. Okay, so it is Elohim, very good. Thank you for checking that for me. That's the same place I would have went to a Sador. <laughs> okay, and so we have this word, which is what? King. King? Okay, now he's king of what? King of, the king of the universe or eternity. So now we have the word Olam. Wow, Olam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, we need the bottom there. Okay, so we have O Lam. As in the song of the uh, blessing or song Adon Olam. Lord of the universe. Okay? Or Lord of Eternity. Lord of Eternity. Yes. Oh I put Oh, there we go. Whenever I write this low, there can there can be turbulence. <laughs> Okay, so it can either be translated uh, universe, or literally it's eternity. In fact, Ecclesiastes says he's set eternity in our hearts, so that no man can find out the things of God. <laughs> well, this is just a vocabulary list. So this is only the universe of eternity. Okay. When we say the blessing, we have to add the universe. So of course we add it. But we're not learning that here right now because this is just a vocabulary list. We don't usually add ha to the vocabulary list unless I want to break it up even further and re-explain the, the, uh, the indefinite with the definite. Okay. So in this case, this is a basic list. In fact, you'd have to do that with anything that would have the word the added. You'd add the word ha or the letter hey. Okay. So in this list, I just kept it generic. And I have the word olam, meaning universe or eternity, okay? So, let's go ahead and say the whole blessing together. Um, of course, adding the letter hey for olam, okay? Baruch, Atah, Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech, Ha, Olam. Okay, so there would be a hey here for Ha, Olam, connected to the word, because you see the as a prefix is always connected. Out of 22 letters, we learned that there are 11, there are 11 letters, half of them, that can be used as a prefix. They kind of speak of a whole word. Okay? And there are also letters that you can use as a suffix that speak whole words or pronouns. So, we've learned that. Okay? Alright, so, any questions on this part so far? Any questions? Doing pretty good this morning. I don't have any start on time. I'm going to start closer on time. <laughs> Any questions? Everybody's good? Alright, so let's actually go into a few blessings. Uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and... Um, are we good on the camera for me to write up here? Yes. Okay, good. Alright, so let's take a look at some words that we can use. How about um, looking at creator of... We do the letter bait... Um, Vav, Reish, and Yud, oh no, Olive. Okay? And we have here, in a construct state, creator of. Okay? And by the way, obviously for Bore, it's spelled that way phonetically with, with, the, with the I, only to make you say Re versus just Re. Bore. Right? Bore. It's only there for phonetics. There's no letter U there. Instead, we have the letter Aleph. It doesn't have a sound. It's just there for con construction because it comes from this word. The verb to create. He 
created, bara. So here we have what's in Bereshit, Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, Bereshit, bara, he created Elohim. So who created? Elohim did, but the verb comes first before the, the, um, the name, or the, or the, uh, the pronoun there. So, or actually the, the, is that the subject? Yeah. <laughs> well, English grammar to the job of my mind. Okay? So, Bereshit bara Elohim. In the beginning, God created, we say God created, but it's created God, the earth, heavens and the earth. So, bara is the verb. To make it into a title, creator of, we add the vowel, bore, okay? And we change the vowels. So, basically, we create, change these vowels to an O and an E. And that took it from a uh, verb into a construct state, which is really speaking of a title. He's creator. Bore is creator of. Okay? So, what are we saying here? Uh, we're saying a number of things. We're blessing God for being the creator of certain things. Okay, let's actually um, transliterate this. What is this? B O R. I just put E up. Y so you can. Um, EI, so you can know how to pronounce it. But what is this? This is creator. Uh, okay. What is he the creator of? Well, if we look at the next word, we have hey, Reish, and Yud. And then what we have is the Shiva underneath. And it's there, right? Oh, it's missing the dot. No, no, it, no, no, not as Eric, just the, the Eric you, okay? So, three. So, if I'm going to be really honest about this, it is the P with the, high, with the apostrophe, um, right? Perry. Some even do this. But because it's Shabbat, it's so short of an E sound. This is your shortest E sound, this is your longest E sound. So from right to left, it's long to short. The shortest is Hri, free. So it just actually sounds like you're saying the same timing as free. Free. But it's really Hri, 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 Hri. But almost like the timing of free. Pre. But you do have a small E sound there. Hri, Hri. So, bore, re, hagafen would be the last word we would need for the first blessing. So, we're just going to learn the, gene the, uh, sing uh, the indefinite, and that is gafen. Actually, it's interesting, there's a whole debate on should it be... Should it be gafen or gefen? Yeah. Well, the Ashkenazi pronounce it gafen. Sephardic usually say Geffen, because the actual word for vine is Geffen. But Hagafen is just kind of like makes it more special that it's the fruit of the vine. So they change the sound and it's Gaffen. And it's stuck that way for melodies ever since, because most of the melodies are always Ashkenazi. Unless you're in a Sephardic synagogue and you're going to learn completely different. You know, they go up and down the ladder like the Moroccans and the Spaniards and the and the arrows do. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so this is Gaffin, and obviously we would say ha, just like we say here, the vine. Okay, so we hear Gaffin, and this is vine. Okay, and we'll probably start with that today and pick up again next week to do some more. Okay, all right, all right. So let's go ahead and do the whole blessing for just. Setting apart the Sabbath day or a Shabbat uh, of complete rest, even a feast day, we use this blessing to set it apart. Okay? So let's say the full blessing. Let's go ahead and close in prayer and
we'll pick up next week on the Hebrew blessings again, and then um, I think I'll give you an extra page so we can do uh, a vocabulary list of all the major blessings that can be done daily. They're just the simple blessings, like especially the ones over food. I think maybe we'll do all the ones over food, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's close a prayer. Uh, but we thank you this morning as we've learned to bless your name at all times. May your praise continually be in our mouth as the rabbis have desired for Israel to bless you a hundred times a day. May in everything that we do, morning, afternoon, and evening, may it be a blessing to your name. That, Father, whatever we do, we do it with all of our might. And we do it with all of our soul and strength because we know we're doing it with all of our heart. And, Father, we pray that even today what we've learned will cause us to bless you to give you praise, to glorify you, because truly the tabernacle and temple was a place for Israel to come together and praise the name of the Lord. And even today, as we learn uh, about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, about the Feast of Shavuot, known as Pentecost, we pray, Lord God, that we would do as they did in Solomon's day, as they blessed the Lord, as they sang praises, as the musicians played in harmony and unity when they became one sound and one voice, like the sound that was heard in Mount Sinai, there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God filled the whole house of God, the temple. May we be temples of the Holy Spirit that you feel completely in today and throughout this year as we grow closer to you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Adonai Adonai May the Lord bless you and keep you And make His face to shine upon you And be gracious to you May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you May the Lord grant you His peace Adonai Adonai, but I will let her be your sin.